Welcome back to The Muse and Greg. Today I'm going to show you a product I wish I'd known about 16 months ago before I started travelling around Australia with my family. It's the Red Arc Dual Input DC to DC battery charger. And I wish I'd known about it earlier because it would have saved me such a lot of headaches on that trip. This product's made right here in Australia and Red Arc kindly donated it for a different video comparing solar regulators. I'd finished with that and only decided to test its DC to DC charging functions as an afterthought and boy am I glad I did. Until then, I didn't even realise what a problem I had. The plain and simple fact is, if you're trying to charge caravan batteries directly from your vehicle battery and alternator, you're never going to get enough voltage at the batteries to charge them to full capacity. You might have 14 volts at your vehicle battery, but you lose so much voltage through all those cables, connectors and components leading to your van that you might only end up with 11 to 12 volts at the caravan batteries. That's not nearly enough to fully charge them. A DC to DC charger overcomes this problem by sucking additional current through from the vehicle and converting that into a higher voltage so your batteries can fully charge. So your batteries will charge a lot faster and the various other smart charging features mean they'll last longer too. I'll first explain the testing environment, we'll then do our tests and see how much of a difference this product makes, and then at the end of the video I'll go into a bit more detail on some of its other features and how to connect it up. That's at the end as it may not interest everyone. Before we get into the tests, I'll show you the monitoring equipment we're using so you know what to look for. Inside the caravan we have two voltage and current meters. On the left we have the caravan battery voltage in the red, and the current flowing out of the caravan battery into the lights and so on in the blue, which is not relevant for these tests. On the right we have the voltage coming in from the vehicle and the charging current from the vehicle. The most important one to watch in this test will be the blue current readout on the right hand meter. You'll also be able to watch the status lights on the charger to show when it's working. I've also got this power meter at the back of the vehicle which shows the total voltage, current and power flowing into the caravan, which is similar to the right hand meter I just showed you. So here's an example of how it all works together and what you need to look for while we're doing these tests. So there's a few things to watch here. The vehicle's running but the lights are still off on the DC to DC charger, so it hasn't started up yet. Because of that, the input voltage is climbing nicely, but there's no current flowing in just yet. When the charger starts up, you'll see the current on both gauges jump up, which will pull the voltage down a bit. We can see at the back of the vehicle that the voltage has dropped down as the current has increased up to about 17 amps. It's a similar story inside, with about 10 to 13 amps coming into the battery. The variation is due to the charger adjusting the current to keep the voltage from exceeding the preset maximum of 14.6 volts. We can see on the left hand side that 14.5 volts is what the battery voltage is showing at the moment. I'll mention in passing that some caravans like ours which charge directly from the vehicle include a safety device called a diode in the charging circuit. It's like a one-way valve for electricity that prevents electricity from the caravan batteries getting back to the connector where it could damage batteries if there was a short circuit. It's simple, but it also chews up close to a volt of electricity, which just makes this problem worse. This is the diode sitting right here, and for most of this test we'll have it bypassed like it is now, but I'll show you the problem it causes towards the end. So this is the voltage coming in from the vehicle. Okay, you can see that. We'll plug that in there. You see the multimeter? 13 point, or well 14 volts, that's the, that's the voltage that's coming out the back of the vehicle. So, we'll plug it back in here, and that's now charging the batteries. You can see the voltage now when it's under load, it's 13 and a half volts, that's the power going in. It goes through the diode, out the other side, it's 12.7 volts. So if you put the multimeter directly across that diode, you can see exactly what the voltage drop is. Nearly 0.8 of a volt that you're losing across that. So when you've only got about 14 volts coming in, or in this case, by the time you've got some losses in the cabling, you've got about 13 and a half volts coming in, that's what you'd want going into your batteries. Unfortunately, with a the diode there, you only got 12.8 volts going into the batteries. So how are you ever gonna charge those batteries up to 13 volts or higher? In these tests, we've got two AGM batteries wired up in parallel, and they're both half full at about 12 and a half volts. So plenty of capacity to absorb as much power as the system can deliver. Firstly, we're going to be charging the batteries via the DC to DC charger and see how much charging current gets fed into the batteries. We'll then remove the charger and charge them directly from the vehicle's alternator and see how much worse the results are with direct charging. Finally, we'll add the original diode back into the system and see just how poorly the factory charging system performed. Right, enough talking, let's get testing. 
For the first test we're going to be charging two batteries via the Redarc DC to DC charger. Wow, that's about 18 amps flowing out of the vehicle into the charger. Inside the van it's a similar story with about 15 amps going to both batteries. So there's a small amount of power lost by the charger, but it's more than offset by the extra charge it can push into the batteries. We're going to dip the engine to rev. Revving the engine brings the voltage and current up a bit and it's more reflective of what happens while you're travelling. So with the DC to DC charger installed, the meter at the back of the car showed about 19 amps going into the caravan, while the meter inside showed about 15 amps. But what does this drop down to when we remove the Red Arc unit and try charging the batteries directly from the vehicle? As you can see, we're already actually getting a tiny amount of current that's running from the vehicle into the, um, into the caravan batteries, even though the engine's not running. So it's actually discharging the vehicle batteries slightly. That's one advantage of the DC to DC charger that it uh, disconnects once the uh, the engine's turned off. Let's start up and see how much current we get. Okay, remember it's 19 amps before. Five, four to five amps. That may increase, that'll come up a little bit when we give it a rev. Let's see what it does for now. Yeah, seeing that five and a half amps down here coming in with it being charged directly off the alternator. Let's give it a bit of a rev, and see what happens. Now you're probably looking at this and thinking, oh great, 13 amps, I can live with that. Well, it's not the whole story. I'll talk more at the end on this, but note that even while you're watching this, the current is starting to drop. And this is what happens as the battery voltage gets closer to the vehicle voltage. The charge gets slower and slower, and in practice it never actually gets to a full charge of the caravan batteries. You can see now we're down to uh, under 12 amps, even though we started less than half a minute ago at over 13 amps. And finally, let's put the diode back in. Remember, this is how most vans of this vintage would be configured from the factory. that's going to charge the batteries when you're only putting 3 amps in and the 200 amp hour batteries combined. That's the problem. So let's look at the results. Firstly, here's the raw data for nerds who love stats and want to dig a bit deeper. But for the rest of us, let's take a look at a nice graph. Now we were talking about voltage and current readings in the video, but I've displayed the results here in power, which is voltage times current, just to keep the graph cleaner and to capture both elements in a single figure. The x-axis along the bottom shows the details of our three tests. The y-axis shows the power measured at the vehicle and caravan readouts with both the vehicle idling and then revved up to a minimum highway engine speed of about 1500 RPM. The most relevant stat here will be the blue column, the power going into the caravan batteries with the engine running at highway RPMs. As you can see, no matter which stat you look at, the batteries get way more charged when using the Red Arc DC to DC charger, and that's why this is such a great product. The blue reading of 218 watts in test 1 with the DC to DC charger installed is about 35% higher than the 160 watts in test 2 which was charging directly with the divide bypassed and that's nearly three times greater than the 78 watts in test 3 which had the diode installed in the system as the van was set up from the factory. At that charge rate it would take 34 hours or about three days of solid driving to charge these 200 amp hour batteries fully. 
Of course, that's theoretical because with direct charging, the charge rate gets slower and slower as the batteries charge up, and in practice, they won't get anything more than about three quarters full. You can also notice the power consumed by the DC to DC charger itself. In tests two and three, note that there's very little difference between the readings at the vehicle and in the caravan because they're just measuring different points along the same length of cable. But once you add the DC to DC charger into the system, it needs to consume some power just to run its own circuitry. So this difference is a lot greater. However, as you can see, the extra charge current the DC to DC charger delivers more than makes up for those losses. So let's now look inside the box and look at some of the features of the product. If you just want my conclusions, jump forward to about the 13 minute mark. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. The instruction manual, we'll come to that in a minute. Some connectors and heat shrink that allow you to connect up. Red Art recommend that you crimp these as well as solder them. The charger itself and then a sticker. So let's talk a little bit about the, the uh, connections first. The red wire is the charging input from the vehicle. So you connect this to the alternator or the Anderson plug at the, at the front of the caravan. That's your charging input. Yellow wire is the solar input. The brown wire is the charging output. So this is what you connect to your batteries inside your caravan. And of course the black wire is earth. So you connect that to the negative terminal of one of your batteries. Then you have these three thinner wires, which are signal wires. The orange wire, depending on what you connect that to, that's what you control the different charging programs. So we mentioned it's got four different charging profiles. We'll talk about those in a minute. You can control those by what you connect this to as to which charging profile you select. The blue wire tells the charger how low the input voltage can go before it automatically turns off. Now if your vehicle has got a standard alternator, leave this wire disconnected and the charger will switch off once the vehicle battery voltage drops below 12.7 volts, which happens when you turn off the engine. But if your vehicle has got a smart alternator, it may actually dial the, dial the voltage right down to about 12 volts under some operating conditions. In that case, you connect this wire to the vehicle's ignition and the charger will keep running right down to 11.9 volts ensuring it doesn't turn off while you're still driving. It's a good idea. And lastly, the green wire can be used to drive an optional external LED, which will show what the charger's doing if you can't easily see its built-in lights. I was a bit confused about how this worked, so I emailed Red Ark for an explanation and got a decent and prompt reply. So in the manual itself, quite straightforward. Um, just talks about the specifications of the unit. I've got the 25 amp, amp version here. I mentioned it's got a two year warranty on all of these, these devices. Um, this is where you get information on the different charging programs. So I mentioned that before. We talked about the different charging profiles here, A, B, C and Lithium. In the manual it tells you what they are referred to. So charging profile A will charge up to a maximum of 14.6 volts, B 15 volts, C 15.3 volts and the Lithium profile will go up to 14.5 with a special profile for Lithium batteries. So depending on how you configure that orange wire it will then set different charging maximums to the point at which it will charge up to before it switches into flight mode. The construction inside looks great too, which is what you'd hope from an Australian made product. All the components are covered in a thick layer of gel which protects them from dust, vibration and moisture so the product lasts as long as possible. You won't see this sort of thing from the outside, but it's a little type of detail I was really pleased to see, and in my view it helps to justify the relatively small price premium over similar products made overseas. Built Not Bought has an in-depth video on their YouTube channel looking at how this charger is manufactured at Red Arc's South Australian facility, including the creation of this layer of silicon. It's a very interesting insight into everything that goes into making sure the product works as intended, so check that out if you'd like more information on the design, building and testing process of Red Arc's products. So there's a lot I like about this product. It achieves its core function of charging the van batteries far more effectively than charging them directly from the alternator and also in bundling an MPPT solar regulator inside the same package. It switches itself off when not in use. It's compatible with a range of different batteries and if you have solar and vehicle inputs running at the same time it favours solar to reduce the load on your engine. It's built very well and while the Red Arc solar blanket I covered in a different video was made in China, this unit's manufactured right here in Australia like most of their products. So you're supporting Australian design and manufacture jobs too. And the great thing about it is it's not much of a price premium for that either. The local product sells for around $450 which is only about one to 200 more than 100% made in China units or ones which are designed locally but still manufactured in China. I also found Red Arc's technical support to be knowledgeable and prompt. There really are only a couple of very small negatives about this product. I found some of the wiring instructions in the manual a little bit confusing and Red Arc said they'd update the manual to address this. 
And the other thing was that the remote LED powered by the green wire unfortunately doesn't indicate what stage the charger is running in, like whether it's boost, absorption or float. It's just on for charging, off for not charging, or blinking for various different error codes. I guess there's only so much they can do with a single LED, but I would have preferred they'd set it up to support the charging status as well, perhaps by using a two color LED. So I hope this video has helped you in deciding if this product's right for you. If so, please like, share and subscribe. And either way, please let me know in the comments what you think or if you've got any questions about it. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.